I want to drop my mower off and maybe have you guys go through it. Put a new spark plug and all that kind of stuff in it. <laughs> we'll take it in. I hope you're not in a hurry. We're three months out. <laughs> three months? You can't get it to me any sooner? Oh, well, let me think about it. Huh, do I want to drop it off? I don't know. Mower season will be over by then. It's kind of a long time. We're busy. Do your thinking over there. <laughs> Hey, I, I guess I'll leave it with you guys. I, gu I guess I'll drop it off. Get in the back of the line. <laughs> what can I do for you, sir? And make it fast. Spin it out. <laughs> Next. <laughs> oh, 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 yes, just more. Hello, this is Gordy's Fix-It Shop. Gordon speaking. How can I help you? Uh, no, I don't need any aluminum siding. I'm in the metal building. But uh, let me ask you this. Is there maybe something I can fix for you? Okay, well, you have a nice day too then. Well, I can't rock this bell. I'm gonna have to give Terrell a call. Crash Raps Garage, what do you want? Oh, hi, right, Junior. You guys busy over there? No, we're just sitting around twiddling our thumbs, waiting for you to call. What do you want? I know what you mean. And now I'm covered up over here, too. Hey, uh, listen, I'm having some troubles routing this snowblower belt. I was wondering maybe if you had any tricks or some tips. Kind of got a little twist in it. It's the height of the season and you're working on snowblowers? Well, uh, never know when it's going to snow. I don't have time for this. Uh, uh, hello? Well, thanks anyway. Pterodactyl here. Today's how-to video is going to be on these here Briggs and Scranton push mower carburetors. They put these engines on a bunch of different push mowers, but they're basically the same engine. This is a 625 EX. This has got an auto choke. This is a 500E. This one's got a primer in the center. But they're basically the same engine, carburetor is the same. So this one won't run. So I'm going to take off the air filter and the cover and I'm going to spray some carb spray in there because that's where the throat of the carburetor is. which tells me it ain't picking up any fuel or something blocking inside the carburetor. Now you got these two shiny screws here. They're plastic screws. They're seven millimeter will work or nine thirty seconds. So we're going to take those two out first. Then we got a screw here and a screw here. They're machine screws and they're 5 sixteenths and the cameraman was on top of my 5 sixteenths socket and I'm looking all around going where'd that socket go? Cameraman got his knee on it. So take those four screws off now you can pull this off and there's a vent tube on the back of here. So we only sprayed that carb spray in there to use it as a test and I hear this comment all the time shouldn't be spraying that in there. You're going to blow the engine up. You ain't going to blow no engine up. That's a fuel. That's an alternate fuel. I hear that all the time. 40 years, never seen an engine blowing up. But obviously, some of you people out there seen it many times. Hmm. I've never seen it. 
All right, now we're gonna disconnect the fuel line. Pinch off the fuel line. And I'm gonna get the clamp off. Bring it back. And we'll disconnect it. Come on, fuel line. It's a little short fuel line, there we go. Now you can wiggle the carburetor and it'll come off. So now we gotta disconnect this link and disconnect this link. You do that just by turning it. See, it's got that little Z bend on there. That's for the auto choke and this is the throttle. And then here's your manifold pipe down in there. Can you see that? That's what this fits onto, that pipe. All right, so now we got the carburetor off. Let's go on the bench, take it apart, take a peek inside. Okay, now there's gas in the bowl, so you're gonna wanna get that out of there. There's a couple ways you could do it. You can try to get it out through the inlet, or if you got a 10 millimeter Allen wrench, you can just give that a half a turn, and this will pop out, and you can drain all the gas out. So you're not making a mess. And then you just put it back in and give it a half a turn and it seals back up. Now here, this is the auto choke. So maybe you got a problem with your auto choke. Maybe this spring come flying off and you didn't know where it went. So see how the spring hooks to here and to here. And this little piece here actually comes out. It snaps into the side. Here, I'll just take it off and show you. See? So that snaps in. And then you hook the spring on one end. And then the other end on there. See how that is? And you want it the throttle in this position. Because if you look, the choke is fully closed. See, when the choke is open, it kind of holds it open a little bit. I mean, when the throttle is open, see, it kind of holds it open. So now it's closed. See how that is? I know some of these videos people make, they don't, they're not real thorough on them. You're like, I want to see how that goes. He's got his hands all in the way, see? I'm going to show you how the auto choke works on this thing. All right, so now we're ready to take the carburetor apart. Again, seven millimeter or nine thirty seconds. More than plastic screws. Be careful, you can strip these out. Then, you know, you're either gonna have to go with a bigger screw or maybe shove some toothpicks in there and take up the slop. And then you're gonna wanna pop the bowl off because it's got an O-ring on it. So you might have to pry up a little bit on each side with a little screwdriver, see? And then you can pop that loose. And we can pop the float out. Just a little pin that snaps in here. Again, a little screwdriver. Pop that out. Oop. There's your hinge pin. And there's the needle. Now sometimes, I don't know what they use to plate this metal needle, but sometimes that plating comes off. And it might, you know, make the needle stick. So if your plating is coming off, you're gonna wanna replace this and we're gonna give you the part number for that. Still a little bit more gas in there, we'll get, get that out. Now this is the main part of the carburetor here. Now, you could grab it with a pair of pliers and wiggle it out, but you run the chance of breaking this and then you're gonna have to part, buy that part. So, you can go in from the inside and with the screwdriver, see that right in the center there? That little white piece sticking up a little bit in the center. That's the, the main nozzle tube. You can push on that and pop it out. See? 
Gotta push hard. Then you can grab it with a pair of pliers and kind of wiggle it. Just wiggle it gently and pull it out. All right, now we can put the carburetor down. So here's your main jet. And this is your main nozzle. Now these two pieces separate too right here. Just wiggle them and pull them apart. And then there's another little orifice here. Want to make sure that's clear. Now I had it where there was a piece of crap stuck way up in here that I couldn't see. It looked like it was clear, but it was still obstructed. It was right in this part here, this area where it's hard to see. And I blew through here and that, and it was still wedged in there. I don't know what it was. So you can take your tip cleaners. These are welding tip cleaners you can buy at the store. And you can pop out this little ball. See that little ball will pop out. Then you can make sure that's clear and not obstructed. And you can take some carb spray, spray everything off, make sure it's all nice and clean. Find the right size tip cleaner, make sure that that main jet is clear. You don't want to file on it. Take a little shop air. Blow it off gently. You ain't got to hit it with 120 pounds. Go inside here. Blow in this cavity here. Now, if this ball, I know over time, sometimes this plastic will warp. And this ball may be loose in there, may not fit tight, may not snap in. So you can put a couple of drops of crazy glue on there. Don't go crazy with the crazy glue, just put a drop or two. Because crazy glue, all right, I'm going to use a big word here now, is impervious to gasoline. You know what impervious means? I don't know what it means either. I just heard somebody say it one time. No, it means gas won't affect it. Gas is not going to dissolve it. So say you, you glued your butt to a toilet seat and you can't get off. And it's like, well, get some gasoline. That'll eat it off. No, it won't eat it off. You got to get acetone. So gasoline will not get your glue stuck butt off the toilet seat. Okay, so now we could stick this back together. It goes on this way. See this little pocket here matches this little part there. and make sure it's seated all the way that that's closed up there's no gap there now if you need to replace any of these o-rings you'll have to look them up and then this thing will only fit in one way see it won't fit that way it sticks up too high so it goes in that way you know it's in right when it goes up to the o-ring and then just snap it back in Oh, one other thing. See this little white collar in there? Make sure that white collar didn't move on you. If that thing moved, you're not going to get this in either. This won't go in if that little collar moves. So if you're trying to fight this in and it won't go, it's because that little collar moved. You have to line it up. And then just push it back in. And again, you know, the little nozzle will be sticking up. See it? See where the nozzle is? Just barely sticking up on that white collar in there. All right. So take our needle, put it back on the float. Then you can hold it like this. Oh, let's put our hinge pin in. Drop it in carefully and then just kind of even up that hinge pin and you'll hear it snap in. Now we can put the float bowl on. Now look at the float bowl. 
got this little pocket here, this little cavity. That's got to line up with this. We don't want to put it on like this. That's there for a reason. Let that gas get down to that main jet. So line up your holes, make sure they're lined up. They're screw holes, and then push the bowl back on. Get it on tight. You don't want to use the screws to pull it down. You might strip out the plastic. Because remember, it's only plastic. So don't go crazy tightening them. You'll strip them out. Got that O-ring in there. That seals it up good. And then make sure you got fresh fuel. So drain out whatever's in the gas tank if you're not sure and put fresh fuel in there. Okay, so now we got this in this position, just like this. This is how we want it when we go to put the rods back on. Just like this. So let's go install it, put gas in, see if it'll start. Okay, so now we're ready to install it. So first I'm gonna hook up the auto choke rod. And that goes on there. And then the throttle's in the back. See, just clip them both in, just like that. Now we're gonna hook up our fuel line. And now we're gonna shove this back onto the manifold. Now you may have to whittle it around a little. I got my index finger back here on the manifold and the carburetor. And then I can feel it where it's at, that helps. And then push it on. Okay, it's on. Now we just gotta put our clamp back on. And we can put gas in it. We can even start it like this before we put this back on. So let's do that. Let's put some fresh gas in it. See if it'll start. Okay. Put gas in and see. It runs, it works. So we can go ahead and put this back on. Hook our tube up. Remember, machine screw here, 5 16 or eight millimeter head, seven millimeter, seven millimeter down here. Machine screw there. Get yourself a new air filter if you need it. And then we're gonna go over the, the primer, a little bit on the primer. It's the same carburetor, but I just wanna point a couple things out about that primer system. Okay, we're gonna pull this plate off so I can show you how the primer works. Same deal, two 5 16 head or eight millimeter, and then two seven or 9 32nd. Except those heads are painted. I don't know why. They're not shiny like on the other carburetor. And then again, you got your tube, your vent tube. And then these, these are just locating pins. They'll locate that when you go to put it back on. This is where the priming action happens, through this port here. And that lines up with that. See, when I put my finger over it, I'm getting... So that's what's pumping air through that hole. And then, see this little... Looks like there should be a hose on there. That's just a vent. That's an atmospheric vent. It's just an air vent. So don't plug it off. Don't stick a hose on there. Don't think that there's a hose missing. That's just the vent. Don't worry about that. 
don't concern yourself with that so that's how the primer system works same thing disconnect your fuel line you can pull this off you only got the one throttle linkage to mess with you don't have the other one for the auto choke see how they plugged off the hole for the choke this is where the choke shaft would have went so it's basically the same carburetor see they put that that's where that auto choke part would go right where this this is I don't even think that that part they put on there I don't even think that goes anywhere I think it's plugged off but that's how that works for the primer pretty simple so that's all there is to these simple plastic carburetors on these Briggs motors and as always there's your dinner and don't forget follow me on Facebook and Instagram subscribe to my YouTube channel we got a couple hundred videos and they're all hilariously funny and if you don't have a sense of humor go watch some other stupid uh, how-to channel don't watch mine but if you like to laugh watch mine Jeez, Pa! Now who is it? Can't even eat our lunch in peace. Wherever it is, tell them we're eating lunch. Huh. It's that Skip, the second guest man. Should I let him in? See what he wants! Oh, guess who's here? Skippy's here. You guys busy? <laughs> no, Skip. Just sitting around waiting on you to show up. What do you want? We're trying to eat lunch. <laughs> Looks like I got here just in time. Lunch time. Hey, what'd you guys get for me? <laughs> yeah, good one. What do you want, Skip? Yeah, well, I was gonna see if maybe you could jump me ahead in the line. I got a snowblower out here that needs a little TLZ. Snowblower? We're three months behind on mower repair. And you want a snowblower fix? Eh, well, as the old saying goes, you never know when it's gonna snow, eh? You know you can do with that snowblower, Skip? Uh, no. But what? You can take it over to Gordy's. He's working on snowblowers this time of year. He'll fix you right up. Ha! <laughs> yeah, and maybe it'll run when you get it back. Not likely, little dude. Gordy, huh? I guess I can give him a try. Maybe he can give the little guy some TLC. <laughs> yeah, Skip. Try him. Now go chase waterfalls. <laughs> All right, Daryl. I'll let you guys eat in peace. I'll catch you on the flip side. <laughs>